I still don't believe you had ice cream, to be honest. Yeah, me too. <laughs> well, why, why would I be lying about it? Like hey, Sankha. Never. Never lie about this. Speaking of Ace Queen, Tony G gets it one more time. Tony has a card, right? Well, this round is so fast. Only one card left. This round is so fast. Hmm? Only one card left? Yeah, so fast. Who and who? Danny and Ten? Yeah. Yep. Oh. Ten and the, the Ten. The Ten Brothers. I didn't even know that. Ten and the Ten. Well, it's Danny Tang and Tan Xuan who do not have a card. Tan Xuan has lost multiple stand-up games so far. <laughs> and Wai <Kin> Yong <laughs> once again gets aces. Two nines for Warwick, the Australian. Gonna try to take a flop here, and that's going to likely invite some other people into this pot as well. comes Tony G. Jung here, Queen 10 suited, getting a good price. He's in. <laughs> good luck, guys. Those are fun that they all make it. You want to push you? 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 You want to 也不是特别差，还行吧。你就中上两倍了。We're playing five hundred, one thousand with a fifteen hundred dollar ante on the Triton Poker Super High Roller Cash Game. Tony G, who loves talking a lot, he raises up to three thousand dollars under the gun. Next, Jang calls with Queen Ten of Diamonds under the gun plus one. Over around to Danny Tang in. The hijack, he helps to call with the queen three of hearts. He's splashing. Tanjuan in the cutoff. Calls with jack eight offsuit. They like to play. Over around to Wai Ken Yang, who is a super crusher on the Triton tournament circuit. He has over $12.5 million in live tournament caches. He gets, and it's pretty good, pocket aces. He makes it 18,000 bucks. All right, over around to Warwick in the big blind. This is a very annoying spot from out of position because you're barely getting the right odds to set mine. And because of that, you usually want to fold unless you think you could potentially shove it all in because you gotta realize once the pot has become this big, even a $200,000 stack isn't all that deep. Kind of weird, but I think that's the case. That said, I don't think we are shallow enough to rip it in in this spot. I also don't think you wanna re-raise and then fold. And I don't think you want to call because if you call, you have to remember we're facing an under the gun raise from Tony G and then a bunch of callers who maybe are slow playing and they'll re-raise some portion of the time. So I think this is a spot where you probably just want to let the nines go. It's annoying. You don't want to have to fold pocket nines, but it is what it is. Whatever. He splashes around. Tony G under the gun. For 15,000 more with ace queen offsuit, I think you're going to be pretty dominated here, especially after the three bet and the call. And because of that, I would probably let it go, but whatever. Tony G calls. Then Jang getting good pot odds with a good, solid, suited, connected hand has a reasonable call. Everybody else folds their trash. That was a lot of pre-flop action. Let's go to the flop. <laughs> Queen 10 6, two clubs, pocket aces and overpair, but he's up against Jung's top two pair, Queen 10, and Tony G actually has top pair, top kicker. Jong is 360 big blinds deep. Mike Kinyong 
trying to extract some value from those Broadway type hands. 35k is the bet. In this episode of Weekly Poker Hand, the flop comes Queen of Clubs, Ten of Clubs, Six of Diamonds, giving Young Pocket Aces an overpair. Tony G, Ace Queen, Top Pair, Top Kicker, and Jang, Two Pair. That's pretty good. They check around to Young. He goes for a $35,000 bet, which is perfectly reasonable. Next, Tony G with his Top Pair, Top Kicker just calls. They are playing $515,000 deep. This is a spot where ace-queen's almost always good, but if you get a lot of money in the pot at this point, you're not loving it if you're Tony G. So he does opt to just call. Let's see what Jang does. Tony's in here. Top pair, top kicker. Let's see how Jang wants to proceed here with queen-10 suited. Top two pair. You get pay off a lot more than regular one. Jong check raises to 130,000. Why can Yang now two aces? Jang is in a very abnormal scenario because he has in his stack 359,000, and the pot has already ballooned to 150,000. So his options here are to call, but I really hate calling on this incredibly draw heavy board because the queen 10 on the board should really line up with both of your opponent's ranges to the point that they're not gonna fold the check raises all that often. So the question is how much do we wanna raise? Do we wanna make it something like 100, something like 150, or perhaps all in? If you go all in and you think your opponents are always gonna call off with over pairs or top pair, then I like shoving a lot. And this is a spot where I do think that will probably be the case. Also, a nice thing about shoving is that you can make your opponents fold out decent equity draws like King Jack and the Ace High Flush Draw, which are exactly the hands you want them to fold or call getting very bad odds. So you give them bad odds, which is fine, and you make them fold a lot. And you get action from hands like Ace, Queen, and Pocket Aces that are never going to fold because, notice, Jane could easily have lots of draws here. So I think in this spot, I would prefer a shove. That said, he does go for 130,000, which is fine. Uh, the issue is that he does not have a ton behind. He has 229,000 behind after making it 130, and that might look a little bit suspicious to your opponents, but that's what he does. He goes for that size. Let's see if the pocket aces or the ace queen can find a way to get off the hook. In a tough spot as they're very deep, and there's still Tony G to act. Also holding the ace of clubs, blocking some of those draws you're trying to pick off, like ace x of clubs. Mikein's going to make the call. This is a tricky spot because I think normally Yang would prefer to just rip it all in for Jang's 229,000 more because pocket aces is ahead of basically everything besides sets and two pairs. So is that a good play? The problem is that he has to worry about Tony G slow playing and Tony G would definitely have pocket tens and pocket sixes in his range in this scenario some portion of the time. Now maybe... Tony G always, gotta be careful using the word always in poker, maybe Tony G always raises with those hands. If that's the case, then you don't have to worry about being beat, in which case you can just go ahead and re-raise. However, there is a little bit of merit in calling because then Tony G may call with a hand that's drawing thin or dead, like ace-queen, right? So I think why Ken Yang can go either way between calling or shoving. I do not think he can fold. The only way he can go about folding aces in this scenario is if you are very, 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 very sure your opponent will literally never check raise with a draw, and I just don't think that's the case. So, why can Yang calls? Let's see if Tony G can find a way to get off the hook. 
Tony G correctly lays down top pair, top kicker. Ace queen giving him nightmares. Turn is the jack, so that's going to bring in some straights. Eight nine, king nine, ace king of course. But you would expect these hands to have clubs. Jong's got two thirds pot remaining. He knows that aces and kings is a large part of his opponent's range. No, but it's hot everywhere. Even when I was playing in a casino, yeah, it's hot. Really? In the rooms are in the rooms are hot. Yeah, you can air on the night. It's hot. 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 So he does make the all in here, queen 10. Uh, Tony G folds no problem. Nice fold. He recognizes he is going to be smashed in this spot. I think a lot of players say, oh, top pair, top kicker. How can I fold? And they lose a bunch of money. But not Tony G. He gets out of the way. Good job. He's been set up plenty of times in his life. He knows that he is crushed here. All right. River comes. A jack of spades. Jang. Shoves it all in, $229,000. That sounds like a lot of money, but realize there's already 375 in the pot. So it's just a little bit more than half pot. What should Yong do? Let's take a look. Sing Tai. Why Ken Yong does pick up some additional outs with that jack. As he can make a king to make a straight. Seems that Waikin was suspicious on the flop already and it's playing cautiously to the flop check raise. Gonna lay it down correctly. Well done. You need to show. Oh yeah, you card. need to show. Yeah, uh, I don't need to show. Oh, you already have a card. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, ace queen. I had ace queen again. Didn't fall for the bluff, huh? Uh, ace uh, queens. Not, not good. good. Oh, this this hand if sure. he no no for sure. had ace queen is so it's... tough. After much deliberation, Wai Ken Yong finds the fold, and I certainly don't fault him for folding because Jang's line looks really really strong. And on top of that, you have the Ace of Clubs, which blocks a lot of the logical draws that Jiang could have. The problem, though, is that you always have to consider your pot odds. At this point, based on the pot odds, Jiang needs to win 27% of the time. 229 divided by 604 plus 229. And as you can see in the graphics here, which I'm not sure if they account for the dead cards or not, you can see, though, he's going to win about 27% of the time against Jiang's exact hand. Now, given Queen-10 is one of the best hands Jiang can have here, how does Yang fare against the weaker hands that Jiang could have? Would Jiang ever make this play with Ace-Queen? Maybe, maybe not. What about King-Queen? Maybe, maybe not. What about King-Jack? Turn pair and open-ended. Maybe, 
Well, maybe not. What about Jack-9, right? What about weak flush draws? What about a hand like 9-7 of clubs? Maybe, maybe not. That'd be optimistic. But as you can see, against the very good hands, you are, you know, 20 to 30% equity, right? But against the made hands that you beat and the draws, you're in amazing shape. So I don't know exactly how much equity Young has against Jiang's range in this spot, but I bet it's something like 32, 33%. And when you only need to win 27% of the time, and you know you're going to win on average 33% of the time, accounting for the entire range Yang can have, you have to call. And you're going to find that very often when you're getting really good odds with a pair plus draw or a pair plus additional equity, and it's worth noting over pairs usually have additional equity because they can make a better two pair. Like notice here, a jack or a six gives why can Yang the best hand in addition to the king or the ace. And I think he just has to call it off here. It's an annoying spot, but he finds a way to let it go. You know, that made me think about a trivia question for all of you while we're here. When should you fold pocket aces before the flop? Think of all the scenarios you can and let me know in the comment section down below. I'll come back with one of them and we'll see if you all have some more in the comments later. The one very common spot that occurs when you should fold aces is when you are on the bubble or very near the bubble with a bunch of short stacks around in a satellite tournament. Because if you have a medium stack and you're guaranteed to get in the money, let's say you have 40 big blinds and there are five players remaining who have two big blinds and the next person out gets nothing and everybody else gets in the money. Say you raise your aces and then a big stack rips it all in on you. If you call, you're going to win 80-ish percent of the time, which means you get in the money 80-ish percent of the time. The problem though is that if you fold, you're going to get in the money 99% of the time because you're going to outlast one of the two big blind stacks, right? So that's a spot where you should very, very easily fold the aces. I do think some people take this concept a little bit too far. Maybe they're five away from getting in the money in a satellite where they get a huge payout increase. And instead of there being five short stacks, there's one and you only have 10 big blinds and everybody else has 20. Then people are trying to make humongous folds and it's usually a gigantic blunder. But if you're ever guaranteed to get a large payout increase as you are in satellites where you usually get 10 times your money or five times your money or something like that, it's usually best to sneak into the money if it is literally free. But again, make sure it's literally free. If you have any other scenarios, again, let me know in the comment section below. That's me for today. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Do me a favor. Go back down there. Click the like and subscribe button. I would appreciate it. Click the notification bell. And today we talked about pocket aces. I have another hand lined up for you where we discuss when you should potentially fold pocket kings. Hope you enjoy it.